I would. I would like to start with the person that matters the most. Madison, she was a kind soul. She always had a smile on her face. She lit up the room when she walked in. Her laugh I could listen to all day. It was infectious. Her big sister skills were undeniable and she took that role very seriously. Madison was smart, funny, loving, passionate, determined, and genuine. Her expectations were high and at times we needed to let her fall. She needed to be reminded that not everything is perfect, even if she wanted it to be. Madison had an influence that most never achieved. Sometimes I would listen to a poem she wrote or watched her create art with no tracing, just pure talent. She would talk about college and what major she would like to do and what would be most helpful to society. The passion that she had for everything and everyone was remarkable. I would catch myself watching her and thinking to myself, how lucky am I? I'm the one that gets to be her mom. What did I do to deserve a perfect person? She will be the best thing to ever happen to me at such a young age myself. I grew up because of her. <coughs> we grew together. I learned from her. I matter because of her. From the moment she was born, I promised myself that I would be there no matter what. Through the falls, heartbreak, letdowns, and struggles, I would be there. I would listen, learn, and love every moment. I wouldn't miss a thing. I would always protect her. On November 30th, 2021, exactly 17 years, 6 months, and 13 days, made me break my first promise, and it will hurt for eternity. As her mom, I didn't protect her. First, I'd like to say thank you to the prosecution team. I say thank you to you all. Saying thank you really doesn't seem enough anymore. The countless hours you've worked, the time away from your family, and always taking our feelings into consideration. Karen and Mark, the work you've put into getting all the facts, speaking to us, speaking to us like we matter, and never wavering from your goal. It speaks volumes of the people you are, and I'm proud to call you a part of Madison's voice. Advocates and Jen, I'm not sure where to start. You've all seen me hit points in this tragedy that some days I wasn't sure who it was. One minute I'm laughing, next I'm crying, and sometimes I'm just silent. Either way, one thing stayed consistent. You always listened. Jen, you're not just a friend, you are family. My mind keeps going back to something during the trials. Something that is almost on repeat like a broken record. It's something as a mother I can't understand. And honestly, I don't think any mother, mother would understand. It was when Jennifer said, it wouldn't do anything different. I'm putting a little emphasis on different, as I know life throws us things that are out of, out of our control. But life takes turns and eventually puts them back in our control. Like giving you a hint when something needs to change. I want to compare a few things to see through my perspective. As I know things are different about the events and how we see them from the events on November 30th. While your son was hearing voices and asking for help, I was helping Madison pick out her senior classes. While you were perching, seeing a gun for your son and leaving it unlocked, I was helping her finish her college essays. While you dropped him off at school, upset that he was failing class, I texted Madison, drive safe, it's slick outside, have a good day. When you got a call to me at the school about your son and how it interfered with your day, I was rearranging my schedule so I could take Madison to get her oil changed for the first time. When you left without hesitation and not taking him home, I was worried if she'd be okay driving in the first snowfall of the season and if she brought a coat. When you walked out of the office, 
with a steady pace after hearing an active shooter. I ran from my home and started driving, trying not to break the law. When you were on the phone for 10 minutes with each other, trying to figure out where the gun was, I was on the phone with her father and family, trying to figure out where she was. When you left the Myers without knowing where your son was, I was desperately trying to get there as soon as possible. When you knew the gun was missing, you called the police, knowing it was your son who took it. I was having family call every hospital describing what she looked like. When you texted, Ethan, don't do it. I was texting Madison, I love you, please call mom. When you found out about the lives your son took that day, I was still waiting for my daughter in a parking lot. When you questioned the reasoning on why you would do this, I was questioning if I would, was doing enough to find her. When you got a chance to speak with your son, seeing him alive and showing no support. I was watching families reunite with their children, waiting for my moment. When you asked him why, I was waiting for the answer on to why the last bus never came. When, you, when the police showed up at your house, you didn't understand why they were there. And I was asking police if they checked every possible location and if I could go search too. When you texted about not losing your job and you needed a lawyer, I was still calling my daughter because she came first in all parts of my life. When you could leave your house, I was still a prisoner in Myers. When you worried about what people thought of you and feeling threatened, I was learning your son threatened my daughter and fatally shot her in the head. When you drove to get your burner phones for communication, I was laying on the floor in Myers for hours crying because I forgot how to speak. When you checked into your first hotel, I was telling Madison's 11 year old sister she was gone. When you cared more about yourself and getting alcohol and supplies, I was identifying my daughter in a medical office wishing I could take her place. While you were hiding, I was planning her funeral. And while you were running away from your son and your responsibilities, I was forced to do the worst possible thing a parent could do. I was forced to say goodbye to my Madison. We all see things different. Some prioritize and some don't. Accountability can only be given if you actually try it in the first place. As a parent, we all make mistakes. This is a normal way of life. Usually when mistakes happen, we learn from them. We try to fix it or talk it over. But continuing to make the same mistake over and over again is no longer a mistake, it's a choice. That becomes a decision. Those decisions that you made ultimately took my, life, my daughter's life because you decided that you didn't want to parent and listen to your son, you took the right away for me to be a mother. You do not get to decide that. You do not get those privileges. You are not above anyone. I love being a mom. It's the one thing that I'm truly great at. You cared more about your well-being than the one life that you should put above anyone, your child. And because of that, you took that you both took four beautiful children away from this world. Being a parent is the best, is the part of life that you should hold to the highest level. It's an honor to be a mother or a father. Even when you think you have done your best, you continue to do more. Unfortunately, you, you never made it to level one. You say you wouldn't do anything different. Well, that really says on what type of parents you are, because there's a lot of things I would do different. 
But the one thing would, I would have wanted to be different was to take that bullet that day so she could continue to live the life she deserved. You show no remorse, no respect or compassion for our family. The same traits that you've bestowed upon your son. The traits that you have torn my family into pieces. The lack of compassion that you've shown is outright disgusting. Not only did your son kill my daughter, but you both did as well. The words involuntary should not be a part of your offense. Everything you did that day, months prior and days after were voluntary acts of your son to commit a murder. Not just one, but multiple. Shaking your head during a verdict is the utmost disrespectful thing I have ever witnessed. At that moment, you felt your life was more valuable than my daughter's. I will say that will never be true. <coughs> you created a life that you took for granted. You decided that parenting wasn't a priority. Putting your child first should be the only priority. You didn't, and because of that, I've lost my daughter. I had to get answers after her death. Watching the video, hearing testimony on how your son executed my daughter, watching him put the gun to her head as she covered her head and pulled the trigger, seeing pictures of her laying in her own pool of blood, knowing her body sat there for hours, that rigor mortis had already started to set in, so that when I identified her, her body was in a state I couldn't imagine. Hearing her sister scream over and over again, night after night, watching her family and her friends fall apart. You created all of this. You created your son's life, which then allowed this to be his path, which should be yours as well. You don't get to look away. You don't get to cry. I didn't get that choice. You failed as parents. The punish punishment that you face will never be enough. It will never bring her back. It will never be a loss that you have suffered and it will never heal the pain. Because one day you're gonna be able to see your son, visit, hear his voice, possibly laugh, maybe see him grow. I will never see that again. <coughs> the the so-called loss that you say you have suffered doesn't even compare to the loss of a child. <laughs> Your Honor, I request that the maximum sentence be enforced as it will never come close to the life sentence I was given. A life sentence that I didn't ask for, but a choice that was made for me. A life that I will suffer because of their negligence. Thank you.